thank you everybody for joining this NetSuite for Dummies webinar. And the main agenda for today is to just basically having our solution expert specialist Andre Postalatse telling us the basic things about NetSuite. And my name is Petteri Markkainen and I'm here to help you direct your questions towards Andre. And the whole session will be recorded and the recording will be sent to every registrant later on. And you can ask freely any kind of questions. There are no dumb questions in the in the webinar, so just shoot the question in. And all the questions you send are invisible, so nobody else than us can see them. So feel free to ask anything. So yeah, let's let's go. Andre, the stage is yours. Thanks, Petri. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining this uh, webinar. So today uh, we are going to talk about the basics. First of all, we will uh, start with a few slides just to introduce you to the context of what NetSuite is and how it uh, came to what it is today. And then we will have a quick general overview demo of NetSuite. Of course, we will only scratch the surface. And then we will allocate quite some time for discussing the questions, basically the Q&A. Uh, while you guys will be uh, preparing your questions and please I do encourage you submitting those to the group chat to the webinar chat um, we will also answer the three most commonly asked questions when it comes to NetSuite and NetSuite projects so uh, as you all know running a successful business is about dealing with threats and opportunities it's about putting your company and people uh, into the right positions to deal with those situations when they fortunately or unfortunately happen. Every business has a journey and a different next and in today's economy we have all seen that this next is coming at a frightening rate. So people need to react in weeks and months, not longer in years in order to take advantage of opportunities or squash any threats. Uh, for some businesses, their next step would be global or regional expansion or maybe tackling some local regulations. For others, it could be a new product launch or adding uh, a new revenue stream consisting of subscription services. Uh, for others, it's about consolidating 10 systems into one to save money and gain visibility across their numbers. The point here is that every next is different and obviously your company's future depends on your stage of growth and on the industry that you are representing but whatever your next is you must have the system in place to face those challenges unfortunately for most companies this is what their system look like they're fragmented isolated and quite often inefficient as a result, it's next to impossible for them to respond to the constant changes that they face in the world today. Uh, they would typically have to replace multiple systems that are monolithic, systems that have different technologies at the base, aren't easily integrated, and uh, some of them just being stuck on some older versions, relying on past customizations made by some people who might no longer even work for those companies anymore. Now, usually for this kind of situations, it's easier not to touch anything and just add a standalone new module to the whole uh, hairball of applications, making it even more complex in the long run. And I believe it's not a secret for anyone on this call that managing a business within messy applications exposes those businesses to security risks as well as make them vulnerable to their competition. And the results, of course, manifest themselves. Uh, your data is being fragmented, but more importantly, your teams are siloed, right? Multiple applications mean multiple user interfaces, slower user adoption, multiple systems to learn, uh, broken uh, inter uh, transactions and basically broken integrations and no common tech platform to ensure those means that the information is not arriving in the right shape at the right time. And all of that leads to what we call multiple versions of the truth. So one cannot rely on that single number. You always have to double check, cross check, reconcile against some other systems, ledgers and reports. Now, 
Well, this is what this, uh, what NetSuite is actually designed to address. Um, first of first of all, it's NetSuite philosophy. It was born in the cloud and designed to address an entire business. NetSuite is a true multi-tenant cloud solution, ERP solution, uh, and with this multi-tenancy, NetSuite customers get access to the same and latest version of the product worldwide. So there is no customer stock on version 4.1 and somebody stock on version 5.2. Uh, they look different and maintained by different kind of partners. That's not true for NetSuite. It's the only way you can have it uh, upgraded, always the latest version. And because of this, customers can be given instant access to the latest product upgrades on a continual basis. And furthermore, each customer can make their own customizations directly on the platform uh, resting assured that those customizations and integrations will continue to work whenever a new product enhancement is rolled out. This ensures that you get to use the latest functionality without any delay and that you do not need to constantly re-implement, retest uh, any customizations or integrations or re-import the data that you have previously in place. NetSuite is built on a single data source. It's unified data that allows you to report and analyze your entire business end to end. Customers can easily define who is able to view, analyze, and transact across the entire enterprise, uh, managing security by functional areas, fields, companies, subsidiaries, and locations. All of this is built on the Suite Cloud Platform, which offers unrivaled levels of personalization, customization, and development, all within a framework that ensures scalability, security, globalization, and built-in capability to be kept up to date with any new upcoming um, releases. Simply put, Suite Cloud Platform ensures that your account-specific setup and data continues to work whenever a new release is um, rolled out to your account. NetSuite provides the functionality that every business needs to thrive from the core financials, going through professional service automation, all the way to supply chain management, manufacturing, omni-channel commerce, of course, uh, enabled with CRM and uh, the BFN stands for built for NetSuite, basically um, describing the vast ecosystem of partners that develop uh, suite apps, basically certified extensions to uh, extensions to standard NetSuite. And uh, through all of this, NetSuite is global and every business is becoming more and more global. It needs uh, a platform that allows them not just to account in multiple currencies, but also to be able to rely on and scale up 24 by 7 by 365. And NetSuite is able to handle the difficult task of going global uh, with multi-book accounting, multi-currency, multi-country tax compliance. And last but not least important is the fact that NetSuite is fit for your industry. Regardless what industry your business is part of, NetSuite has uh, what it takes when it comes to fulfilling needs of certain industries. Whether we are talking about wholesale distribution or a manufacturing business or an advertising or a software development, subscription sales, uh, services and so on. NetSuite has uh, a vast uh, amount of pre-built leading practices um, already deployed and it's packed with a significant amount of reporting capabilities, which part of them we will see today, like KPIs and dashboards and reports and workbooks that support the business decision uh, uh, process as, um, as the transactions are posted to the system in real time. Now let's let's have a look at NetSuite's interface, and uh, I will be sharing my NetSuite screen in a second. Uh, you should be seeing that right away. So uh, NetSuite, as I as I was always already saying, is a multi-tenant true cloud ERP system, um, which means that all I need to access NetSuite is a any device that can operate a browser. NetSuite is browser agnostic, which means it runs on any browser. And uh, here you can see the starting screen of most of NetSuite users. Uh, it is called a home dashboard. Once a user logs into the system, they are being taken here. 
Before we talk about uh, the dashboard, uh, it is important to highlight the fact that NetSuite is a role-based uh, system. Uh, in this account, I have a vast majority of different roles, so I can switch between them and showcase different functionality. But in real life, uh, users will have uh, one role assigned to them, uh, which will basically define their permission levels, what they can do in what entity and in what part of the process. So I will start my demo with a CFO role. And um, once in the system, um, I can see uh, a dashboard consisting by showing me quite a lot of data. Uh, all the data depicted here is driven uh, via the portlets. Uh, users can tailor the content that they see on their dashboard so they can basically customize themselves the content of the dashboard. Again, this is subject to being locked, but uh, in most cases, you would like to give your users the freedom to do so, uh, starting from the fact that they can customize uh, the layout of the screen based on, uh, on their uh, screen size and on the amount of information they want to be shown. Um, and uh, going further, there are different types of portlets that users can add, basically just by dragging and dropping them to the dashboard, and then very easily in a graphical way configuring them. Different portlets or widgets bring key business information to our fingertips in a different format, whether a graphical or text. Uh, I will review a few of those, which I believe would be relevant for absolutely every, uh, every role, regardless of their, uh, let's say, um, uh, routine or their daily routine. The first one would be the reminders portlet. Basically, this one is comprising all the things that we would like to keep an eye on, uh, to follow up and basically take action on. Here we can uh, observe that we can add all sorts of transactions that are subject to our approval. So at this point, I can see that in, in, uh, in real time, I have five expense reports awaiting my approval and I can actually drill, interact with that data basically anywhere in the dashboard and see deep dive into those particular transactions that require my attention or my action. Then what we can also accommodate by reminders is handling of different exceptions. Say at a given point, I'm a CFO and let's say my company uh, probably is not traversing the best situation when it comes to cash flow. So I can build myself a similar custom reminder. And again, I keep talking to our customers constantly on a daily basis and I tell them that I mean, if you're able to create a pivot table in Excel and create a pivot chart next to that, you should be fine with most NetSuite reporting uh, elements. And it's really easy when I say it's a custom KPI or a custom report. Uh, don't get scared. You don't need technical personnel to achieve that task. It's pretty user friendly. So in this case, I have created a custom reminder that shows me all outstanding invoices that are greater than 50,000 pounds. So I can see in real time those uh, exceptional transactions click through and take uh, action as, as I deem appropriate. Now, NetSuite is packed with KPIs. Mm, there are many standard KPIs that we can leverage from day one in our analysis, analysis and dashboards. And there are also there is the possibility to build custom KPIs. Well, uh, what can be done with a KPI? Obviously, it can be plotted on the graph. Like you can see here, I have quite a few graph uh, portlets on my dashboard, all of them uh, showing uh, different uh, KPIs and their respective evolution. Uh, we can, of course, change the, the way uh, uh, they're graphically represented, their colors, and we can uh, bundle up to three KPIs on a single, on a single graph portlet. Um, depending on the nature of the KPI, we can also change the period at which we are looking at the numbers. It's more analytical. We will then, of course, look at it more from a, uh, let's say, a period, quarter, year perspective. If we look at a more operational one like sales trend KPI, then, of course, I can also produce it like a weekly or even at a daily level uh, to monitor it more uh, granularly. Uh, KPIs can also be very well analyzed in this key performance indicator portlet, which again users can set up to their liking, and I will give you a demo of that. So if I want to add some KPIs to my, to my analysis or of course remove them, 
Uh, I will click here into adding standard KPIs. As you can see, I have quite a few of them already available, so I don't have to reinvent the wheel and spend time on thinking how to correctly report fixed assets or revenue. They would already be here. Now, if I want to be more specific to a certain business, if I want to maybe look at revenue by different sales channels, that would mean I will have to define it as a custom KPI, which is also not a com complex task. Um, if we um, most likely we will not manage to to cover that today, but I'm happy to um, explain that to each and one of you in a separate call. So feel free to book those with. Uh, uh, with Petri and his colleagues. Now, once a KPI is being added, we would also need to tell the system how we want to look at the numbers. So maybe we want to look at, you know, today versus um, uh, same day last month, or some some ru running, some rolling numbers, right? So you can see I don't have to write any kind of formulas. This is all human language, so I can select the interval that I need, and the system is smart enough to properly aggregate the data and show it um, on the uh, portlet. I can see the numbers, the absolute numbers changes here. I can highlight some of the key KPIs on top. I can at any time plot the evolution of a KPI. So I can click on this arrow and see again, plot a graph ad hoc really quickly, look at how that KPI evolved in time. Also, we can produce uh, the uh, snapshots of uh, the different KPIs, as you can see here. Uh, just add those snapshots uh, portlet and then choose what KPI you want it to show. And it will show that basically like a snapshot. So we can see, uh, and NetSuite actually also interprets the data, which is like a good trend or not a good trend. So you can see a payables KPI. Now it's at 1.8 million. The, this value shows me the, the value for the previous month. So basically, NetSuite understands that if my payables is greater than the last month, maybe it's not the best thing, right? Uh, so that's why it's color coded it automatically in, in yellow. Now, if uh, opposing that, if I look, for instance, uh, at receivables, which is equal to my last month or maybe even a bit more, uh, then this is a good thing, obviously, and that's why it's color coded in, in green. So we can have this kind of color feedback from the system. You may have already noticed that I have a subsidiary navigator showing me quite a big setup that I have in this account. And this is exactly uh, what it is. It's showing the structure of the group of companies that I have configured for in, in this setup. So basically, we have uh, a group that is uh, consolidating at headquarter level in, in GBP. Then we have subsidiaries all over the world, each of them accounting in the official uh, currency of that particular country. We also have an intermediate level of consolidation at the regional level where we consolidate Americas in USD, EMEA in uh, uh, pounds, and the Japan Pacific region in Australia dollars. Now, this subsidiary navigator not only shows me the structure of my company. Uh, it also allows me to filter the context at which I am looking at the numbers and basically interacting with the entire system. Uh, remember I told you at the beginning next week is a global system so it can hold way more uh, complex setups than this but this is pretty much a demo so that's why I, I would like to keep it a bit a bit uh, simpler. So uh, because my role has access to all of these companies, that's why I see them. Uh, however, I can, of course, assign an access, let's say, just to have a Japan Pacific CFO. In that case, I would have seen only this portion and as if nothing else exists. Now, with the click of a button, my entire context of NetSuite shifts to Japan. OK, in this case, Japan, right? So you can see all the numbers refreshed on the dashboard, they show me values in Japanese yen, which is the functional currency of that subsidiary. I don't have any reminders to, to handle any exceptions, any things to approve. I can see my receivables for that entity, my revenue, and any other subsequent graphs are also reflecting the, the numbers. With that, I cannot, it's not only that I'm uh, filtering down the dashboard view, uh, I can actually control what I interact with. So if I, for example, open now the list of vendors, NetSuite will show me only the vendors for Japan. If I will go to close my books, I will be closing the books only for Japan and so on. So basically I can be, uh, restrict my, 
by focus on a particular legal entity or a certain region. And with one more click of a button, I'm now looking at my entire JPEG region, which consists of both Australia and Japan. My Japanese yen balances have been translated to Australian dollar. And together with the Australian balances, they're being presented uh, in, in my uh, consolidated view. And with one more click, again, shifting upwards to the headquarter level, um, I can see everything translated to GBP and all the group being uh, taken into account. All the data that you see on this dashboard is coming from a real-time ledger to which all the transactions are posted, right? It's an ERP system, it's not a reporting system only. So as somebody is receiving a purchase order or issuing a customer invoice, these numbers are affected in real time and will be updated accordingly. This also allows us to drill through the data. So for instance, if I'm looking at the revenue KPI for the current uh, value, which is my this fiscal year, I can actually click through any number in this, in this dashboard. While the reminders would drill me in the underlying transactions, KPIs values will drill me into underlying reports. Because I clicked on the revenue, the report that I see in front of me is a classic profit and loss statement that shows me the actually reported revenue for this fiscal period. Now, what we can do with reports inside NetSuite? Of course, we can filter them for a different period. As you can see, I'm looking at a consolidated PL, which is in GBP here, right? Presented. I can then, for example, run it for my Dutch subsidiary, which accounts in euros. And in this case, I will be seeing uh, specifically the, the, the income statement for Netherlands subsidiary. Then we can leverage another very cool thing about NetSuite is its segments or dimensions. NetSuite offers by default three out of the box segments, class, department, and locations. You can re uh, relate to them as cost centers, um, revenue streams, um, geographies, we can rename them in any way. The important thing is that they allow us to slice and dice the business and financial information the way we need it. We can capture them at transaction line levels and then use them instantly in our reporting. Additionally, we can add an unlimited amount of custom segments uh, based on requirements of each customer. We can source them from uh, different uh, ERP data, or we can also push them via um, uh, the integration. Now, additionally, I can use other components, like for example, subsidiary as a dimension. And in this case, since I'm looking at a consolidated PL, I can explode it by my company. So instead of looking at my Dutch subsidiary in its functional currency, I can see now Netherlands presented as a column or as a dimension. And I can actually see the contribution, for example, of Netherlands revenue in consolidated uh, currency to the, to the overall uh, picture. Another example, if I would run it, for example, by department or by cost centers, again, these are totally uh, available for us to rename. Um, we can use a cost center structure, we can use department structure. Uh, all the dimensions in NetSuite are also hierarchical, so you can see that under my professional services department, I have some additional sub-departments, they can all uh, act as uh, dimensions. Uh, additionally, class can be defined as a, for example, revenue stream. Now, our customers are pretty flexible when they are using classes. Some of them use them to classify different customers or maybe you know public and private sector customers, maybe uh, wholesalers, um, small resellers and regular customers, or why not segment the revenue stream? So you can see here, I'm providing, I'm selling some SaaS licenses, then I have some perpetual licenses. My company is also selling some training and support services. And then I also sell some, some hardware, right? Again, these can be treated as lines of business. So we can not only capture revenue, we can also capture, of course, expenses towards that. And to give you an example, you can see here, I have a building maintenance expense of 20,000 under my administration class. So I can simply click on that value. And with one more click, I'm actually getting to the lowest level possible, which is basically the transaction itself 
posted to a respective account in a certain period. So as a as a CFO of a more or less global company, right? Clicking from a consolidated KPI value three times probably in the same screen takes me down to the lowest level possible, which is the actual transaction where I can see the transaction line, how it was tagged, what was the VAT paid on that, and the actual uh, uh, posting uh, of that transaction. This is one of the big differentiators of NetSuite's data model. And again, this, this happening back and forth allows us full to have full traceability and the full visibility of impact of all the uh, actions and transactions that we make. Uh, now, what does NetSuite have for the different roles and for the different industries? Uh, in terms of finance, again, we are only scratching the surface today because obviously like 20 minutes is 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 not enough time to even discuss the, the dashboard itself. When it comes to financials, NetSuite allows us to automate revenue recognition for the different purposes. Of course, we have full automation when it comes to accounts payable, both retrieving invoices from PDF, doing the OCR, routing them through approval, posting them, checking them against purchase orders and receipts, uh, and of course, automatically aging the accounts payable and paying off the bills. Um, accounts receivable, automated customer billing uh, based on the different events, different schedules, all the way to subscription billing, the usage billing and complex billing scenarios. Uh, when it comes to reporting, NetSuite has an extensive reporting suite available out of the box with the core NetSuite offering. All the major financial statements when it comes to intercompany management. Um, and this is also, of course, included currency revaluation reports, uh, expense um, amortization, and uh, revenue deferral is also automated inside NetSuite. Uh, all the subsequent reports when it comes to either purchases and accounts payable, uh, or we talk about sales. Um, forecasting of that sales, that's more of a part of, uh, of a CRM area, which is again um, an, an integral part of NetSuite, all the way to customer and accounts receivable. This is all uh, standard NetSuite reports. Now, if I would use another cool feature and uh, start searching for, for something, just typing in a name, NetSuite searches within its entire database and we can search for transactions, customers, vendors, items, anything we are interested to, to, to find. So of course, assuming our role has access to this kind of data, we will be shown that. And as you can see, I have a customer that has the name matching the, the pattern that I'm searching for. And if I would open a customer record, I just wanted to show you how we set up the different entities. Uh, it's really important to know that everything with respect to your customers or vendors, you would manage in one single place. So here I have a customer record where I manage all the data, primary data relating to this customer. Uh, we will track the communication, basically all the activities, when we call them, what kind of event they were invited to and so on, all the way to messages, basically whenever we need to uh, follow up on their uh, invoices due or any transactions that NetSuite will issue towards these customers will be sent automatically uh, via email containing the, the necessary PDF attachments. We will manage all the financial behavior of a customer also in the same place and many other things. Customers also have their dashboard. And again, the same thing applies to vendors. The dashboard of a customer will show us, again, a similar dashboard that we saw at the beginning, but containing all the KPIs reflecting our business solely with this particular customer or with this particular vendor. Again, you can see here sales and forecast and maybe overdue and days overdue. We can track these kind of KPIs with respect to individual uh, customers. Links to most frequently used reports as, as well available. They will be also coming uh, pre-filtered by the customers. NetSuite will also support our month-end process. Um, so for those when you close the books, uh, you would follow a checklist. So for instance, if I want to close, let's say February, I would click on this checklist and you can see I have a set of steps. The list of these steps depends on the licenses that you have in your account and on the features that you have 
decided to use within NetSuite. But the, basically, the logic is the following: first, we need to lock all the you know all the accounts for posting, so we, nobody can post in that period anymore. And then we will start to do all our let's say accounting related routines. If I were to close, for example, accounts receivable, you can see here I have the entire group of companies available to me. If, for example, I were a CFO of Americas, I would only have these uh, subsidiaries available uh, for me to close the books for. And then after we lock the accounts, then we can start doing the other uh, accounting routines. Again, if you use inventory, you will review inventory costing and any negative inventory if you allow that kind of posting to happen. Uh, then basically we would recognize revenue for those of you who defer the revenue and recognize it on a custom pattern. Then NetSuite would calculate consolidated exchange rates and create the elimination journals for consolidation. And then actually we would call, close, uh, call the period. Uh, closed, and that's a seamless standard process, uh, which which is basically a user-driven, automated uh, process to really close the books in a in a, an efficient manner. Now, expanding further on what NetSuite can do for the different industries, well, uh, NetSuite can um, obviously automate. Uh, let's say not only the order to cash and the procure to pay process, uh, it can also automate uh, the project management and project billing and accounting uh, process. For example, project managers will have a full visibility over their portfolio of projects. They would have full control on what kind of billable time and, uh, and costs are submitted towards their projects. They would be able to uh, supervise how those projects are being invoiced and accounted for. Uh, and run project-related profitability. When it comes to supply chain areas, NetSuite can fulfill the needs of product businesses when it comes to uh, omni-channel commerce, uh, inventory operations, wholesale distribution, basically production at different levels of complexity, um, and uh, of course with corresponding warehouse management automation and quality management automation routines. As an example, a supply chain manager would also have a dashboard, of course, mm -hmm. comprising already more supply chain specific uh, KPIs, which they will then in turn um, uh, keep an eye on and track. They would oversee all, let's say, the POs that they need to approve or maybe some items they would like to, uh, to receive accordingly and uh, and uh, produce based on uh, based on the scheduled uh, work orders. Uh, Petri, I would like to ask you something. Uh, how are we on time? We are decent on time. We have roughly seven minutes left, but I'm sure that we will manage to build it somehow. So just keep going a couple more minutes if you if you have something right. to do. Okay, cool. So one last thing I would like to show you uh, really quickly is analytic workbooks. It's another way for us to create reports inside NetSuite. Uh, it's basically when, as opposed to the previous example with reports, when we looked at, uh, say, uh, P&L reports or maybe an inventory turnover report, that's a more operational one. But what if I want to ask more analytic questions? Let's say I want to track how my, how my sales evolved during the last one year based on categories or by sales reps. That's a more analytic report to ask. And typically ERP systems rely on separate uh, systems like uh, BI solutions that require a separate database behind that. So you have to invest quite a lot in, uh, let's say, IT staff being able to uh, extract the data from the ERP and load it into analytics warehouses. While in NetSuite, you can achieve similar um, tasks in your standard NetSuite account, basically creating data sets. Say I want to analyze my invoiced sales. So I will bring here a data set. Again, this is all visual. I just want to look at all my sales transactions by items, by dates, with the respective amounts. And from that, I can start creating the different pivot tables and pivot charts. As you can see, the interface is very similar to one the one that you see in Excel, right? We have uh, rows, columns, and measures. We can create calculated measures. We can apply conditional formatting, and we can see live data, basically our sales. And if I use as a, as a, as a measure, I use my transaction currency, you can see that the same item has been sold in 
uh, both pounds and dollars because I include sales from the different subsidiaries. So I can actually show that in uh, right in my in my pivot report. I can then plot those numbers on the graph. And here I'm trying to plot sales by sales rep. And because my amount is in, in a transactional currency, the system is actually telling me that, hey, you are trying to put on the graph, on the same graph, values from multiple currencies, which obviously doesn't make sense. So in order to continue, I need to con convert the values to a single currency. And I can do that right in my reporting engine. I can go here into the currency. I can choose to convert everything, say, to Vietnamese Dong, and I can choose to anchor that and use the exchange rate from 5th of November. So now my entire pool of transactions, of sales transactions that I'm analyzing from the past, regardless of their currency, is being transferred to Vietnamese Dong using the exchange rate of the 5th November to their respective currency rates. And now I'm being able to report on sales by sales rep. I can save it. I can save it as as a report there, and then I can add. Uh, I can either publish this this collection of visualizations to the different roles, or I can also go to my home dashboard, uh, add an analytics portlet here, configure it up, and say now I want to see sales by sales graph graph, and my my specific graph will now become part of the dashboard uh, from now onwards. Uh, if my data set is, con yeah, I chose the wrong one. I should have selected the second one. Sales by, this one should work. Uh, so uh, the data that is uh, that is being fed is real-time data. So basically, as a new invoice is being submitted, uh, and if my data source includes that period, it will be automatically reported here. And I, as you can see, it's a pretty it's a pretty volatile thing. So uh, yeah, summarizing uh, what I wanted to show you today, we just really quickly scratched the surface. It's really important for us to first of all have business discussions about the businesses and their processes in order to be able to correctly um uh, position NetSuite and uh, to correctly show you how it will solve your business uh, problems now i would like to maybe uh, allocate some time for the uh, questions yeah we have those common questions and then we probably have time for a couple extra questions as well we'll see but thank you andre that, that was fulfilling. So the first question, what I actually myself hear a lot, is about the costs. So how much does it cost? Hmm. Yeah, that indeed is one of the most commonly asked questions customers are looking at. Okay, fine, but how much does it cost? Now, uh, it. I don't want to say it depends, but it depends. Uh, there are two components of uh, NetSuite and the project cost, obviously, two major components. It's the licenses and, of course, the cost of implementing the project. Now, when it comes to both of them, the most important thing is the scope. So the scope defines what exactly are we going to implement, what exactly is going NetSuite to be used for, and this derives both licenses and the scope of the implementation. In our sales stages, me personally, I am engaging with our prospective customers, discussing about their business, discussing about their challenges, and then identifying the, the best way of achieving those with NetSuite, and then agreeing on that scope, which helps us basically estimate accurate and transparent license and professional service uh, costs. In other cases, when we have simple uh, financial uh, setups. We also have a study of success uh, model, which is kind of the other way around of positioning an ERP and selling an ERP system. It's basically we have identified a standard NetSuite setup for which would work for most, let's say, financial uh, scopes. And we present that model. We have it at a kind of a fixed price. We, we, it kind of includes a certain area and certain functionality. 
uh, in that in that kind of model, we present you what we have. It's basically an off-the-shelf uh, setup, and that that of course uh, speeds up the the discussion. But it depends. So uh, in conclusion, engage with us. I'm happy to to spend a few hours with you, and then make it really tailor for uh, for each uh, each and one of your businesses. Thank you. Another very common question we have, I think it's because it's very closely related to the buying process, is how long does it take to implement that like time frame question? Yeah, well, that's, that's another place where I will uh, first highlight the importance of the scope. I mean, ERP is a very broad area, and as you have seen today, we can discuss, discuss financial consolidation, revenue recognition, CRM and I don't know manufacturing uh, routing uh, costing templates so we can go really very very broad while in our projects and our uh, discussions with our customers we try to simplify the approach without of course compromising on the customer's priorities and the functionality I'm just meaning that the scope needs to be defined so it will solve most of the problems in let's say the first phase and then continue to uh, add additional project phases whenever needed in order to expand the solution. So first uh, uh, answer would be the scope is the one that defines uh, the implementation timeline. I mean, anything from four months to 18 months, I mean, that's a pretty broad interval, right? Well, that depends if it's a big bang approach, having in mind all the possible complexity and all the different integrations and stuff like that, this can take time. Now, if we scope it down to, let's say, financials first as a first stage, then we can talk about uh, months uh, long project. A very important aspect to consider is resources. Now, we at Staria, we can, whenever you can, we can commit more resources whenever needed, but often, more often, uh, we, we see that it's both basically the resource bottleneck is at the customer side. So uh, the, the timeline of the project can be affected by the availability of the resources of the customer. Remember an ERP project is a team game. We, we are in this together. We need you as much as, we, as you need us in this project. So uh, we will heavily involve the customers in all the project stages, mostly at the beginning when we do the analyze phase, when we document all your needs, we conduct workshops with you, but also uh, throughout the UAT stage, of course, in the go live and post go live support, where we have to collaborate close uh, to each other. And uh, then it comes to customization versus configuration, another very big dilemma, because you know some processes, the way customers have them today, is not necessarily the best way. Is not always the best way to take exactly the process the way you have it now in another application and uh, implemented in, in NetSuite. Some processes may work differently. That's why it's also always good to consider or being open to uh, accepting leading practices, basically uh, as much pre-built content as, uh, as, as possible. Of course, when customization is really necessary, we would do that, but the more customization we have, uh, the, the longer it will take us to deliver that. And the same applies to integrations. So uh, in most cases, in most deals, we have to integrate to some sort of system or multiple systems. And again, it comes down to assessing the priority of those integrations. We may start with some CSV file transfer based integration, and then in the next stages implement an API connection uh, if it's not a mandatory in, in phase one. This can also affect the implementation timeline. All right. Um, if the resources are sometimes some kind of a bottleneck in the implementation, when is a good time to hmm. when is a good time for ERP or NetSuite per, uh, project? Then? Yeah, well, uh, here is uh, of course from a resourcing standpoint, it's advisable to have the project conducted in the slower period of the business, right? When the customer uh, can commit the resources whenever they are needed. Right. Also, you have to take into account, uh, you know, the, again, the particularity of the business uh, in terms of the load, when you close the books, when you have to do the peak of the sales, uh, when you have the, the vacations and all the other, uh, obviously, human things. 
Now, uh, the go live, a lot of customers ask to, to go live on the 1st of January because like we want to start clean, fresh, first page, first January, that makes total sense. Well, it's it's just they wanted to highlight that you don't don't have to anchor on this uh, on this date. There is absolutely nothing wrong in going live on first of March or first of April or any other date. Uh, it is even advisable in some cases because first of January may be still a pretty busy period because you have both year close and then vacations. You know, people will need to rest; they need to recharge. And um, not maybe not the best possible thing to have, you know, uh, your New Year celebration uh, matching with the go live date. Uh, so what we can do is, for instance, if you shift, uh, say, for the first of April go live, um, the customer may be concerned. Yeah, what about the first four months? We want that historical uh, data to be imported. That's absolutely not a problem. Uh, we go live on the first of April. We import historical transactions from the 1st of January and of course the trial balances from previous years and you start clean on NetSuite let's say from the 1st of April so don't anchor on that 1st of January there is nothing wrong in going live with a different date um, and uh, one more thing about this when it's a good time maybe not from a time perspective but uh, but rather like when is when is a business ready for an ERP system when well before you need one actually because when when you realize you need one you are already having some issues that you need to start solving as quickly as possible and then it becomes a bit in a rush so the more timely uh, you you start to plan for an erp system you have enough time to discuss with vendors with partners so you have time to discuss solutions um, uh, schedule your resources schedule the proper timeline and uh, really make it uh, make it planned and not in a rush the better uh, but of course there are different cases uh, so yeah we can also work in uh, let's say intense space <laughs> glad to hear so i think we are running actually a little over time already uh, thank you andre for your team and everything else and very wide answers they were very very nice and precise um, if there is more questions from the audience. I hope the I hope the uh, demo was good, or if you have any anything else related to NetSuite, just feel free to contact us. And I think we can wrap this up. Thank you, Andre. Thanks. Thanks for joining. Hope you liked it, and looking forward for a fruitful collaboration. <laughs>